Well, welcome back and welcome to my home. I'm sitting on my couch today and we're going to talk about the current real estate market uh, market update for we're in July, but we only have June statistics, right? So I am in the Oregon City area, but I'm in the Portland metro market. So we'll talk in terms of the Portland metropolitan areas market as it stands in July. Um, Oregon City is within that, but it does differ a little bit because we are, you know, a specific market within that Portland metro, and we have such a varying degree of city life, suburban life, and rural life. Um, so we have the full gambit between like small fixers on small lots for not a whole lot of money, and then you have some houses that are in the country that are acres and acres and acres can still be something as small as you know 1500 square feet manufactured homes things of that nature and then what do these statistics even mean statistics statistics can be taken in so many different varying degrees as to however it is that you read into those statistics but i'm, I'm looking on rmls's website right now the latest statistics that they have show that for June, we are at two months worth of inventory. So it's increased slightly. The last time we saw this much was January of this year. Uh, it was 2.7, then it went below two for the next few months and is back up to two months worth of inventory. So what does that mean? That means if there were no additional houses to hit the market, we would anticipate running out of homes to sell in about two months at the rate that they are being sold as is. Then we talk about the difference between what did the market look like last year compared to this year and what did it look like last month compared to this month. So when I'm reading this, it tells you that in residential sales, new listings decreased by a lot actually compared last year to this year. So last year we had about 3,300 new listings um, that it de in total. Um, oh, I'm sorry. This year we had 3,300 total new listings in June, where last year there were almost 4,300 homes listed. So that tells us less people are putting their home on the market, which is interesting to me because we are being bombarded with news that there is a huge exodus of people from the Portland metro area. So that tells me that what we're being told and what is actually happening may not relate very well. Maybe people are holding on to those houses. Maybe they're moving out, but they're moving other people into the houses. But they're definitely not selling them. So there's that information. In terms of new listings from this month, from last month, um, let's see, June of, versus May, new listings were actually up which is contributing to why we're at two months worth of inventory in this month versus 1.9 months worth of inventory last month. Pending sales year over year, so pending sales for this month, this year, decreased by 11.5% from this time last year. So we have less listings, less homes pending, we also have less houses that close, so less houses that finish through the sales for the whole entire year. In terms of month by month, we had less pending sales and we had more closed sales. So take that as you will. We are, you know, the, the market as we're seeing it right now is in spurts. So in certain areas, things are going, for certain areas and certain price points, things go very quickly. A lot of times you see something on the market that's over a million dollars, and that's going to stay on the market a little bit longer than something that's, say, for $5,500. Especially if that $450,000 house is turnkey. So what we mean by turnkey, if you don't know, is something you could just move right into and doesn't need a lot of work. Those are 
typically the houses that we see multiple offers on um, and we're getting into competition over. So if you're in that price point, we have to get really crafty in terms of what we're offering the sellers. Part of my job is to contact that listing agent and ask what terms specifically those sellers are looking for. Do they need rent back? Does that mean that they need to stay in the house a little bit longer after they sell? Are they purchasing another house? Is that why they need the rent back? How flexible can you be on the buy side for what, what is your rental situation? Are you on a month to month that we don't have to worry about it? Are you gonna be breaking a lease? Are you needing to be out because something is going on with the rental that you're in? Or are you contingent as well? So I am now a certified knock specialist. We talked about that. That is a program that if your home qualifies, they will actually help you purchase a house before selling the house that you currently own for a price, obviously. It is 2% of the list price of your home, but they cap it at $15,000. So it would cost you $15,000 to do this where, and you use them as your lender as well in order to purchase a new home and not have to be contingent. So that removes that obstacle in this market where a lot of times if you're in competition and you are a contingent offer, your offer is not likely to be accepted if there are other offers on the table that are not contingent on the sale of a property, or if your offer is significantly over any of the other offers that are on the table. Money is usually the deciding factor. There have been stories where things have been neck and neck, and people have written a letter, a home, a love letter to the home that has been the deciding factor for how some folks have gotten into the house. But in my experience, more often than not, money talks. So, you know, there are some instances where people really want to see, you know, the, if you're saying that you're going to take excellent care of the home or you talk about your vision for the house, which is the vision that those folks had um, over somebody else's vision for how it is that they want, what they want to do with the home, that might be a deciding factor. But in my experience, more often than not, it's the dollar amount and a combination of the terms as well. How quickly you can close if it's a vacant house, things of that nature. So in every market, it's different. I have learned, uh, my mother-in-law was actually purchasing a house in another state, and I learned from her and her experience down there how wildly different other markets are in terms of how they do business. So it was very interesting to go through that as well. Again, I live in Oregon City, but I buy and sell houses, help people buy and sell houses all over the Portland metro area. And so that was the Portland statistics. Let's talk about days on market and the difference between average and median home sales prices. So the days on market for June was about 33 days. Again, that's going to be depend house dependent. You might have a home that's in that perfect price range that's totally dialed in and turnkey where you're sell still selling over the weekend you're still selling close to if not over asking price and then in in terms of if it's a house that needs a lot of work or you have bad pictures uh, i cannot stress enough why having professional pro professional photos make a huge difference here as does staging. I actually talked to one of my referral partners in Arizona and he was saying they don't need to stage houses. He prefers if you if he is listing a vacant home that has no furniture in it at all whatsoever, things sell no problem. Here, I don't know why, but here in Portland, we know that staging usually means you're going to get a higher return on investment and a higher purchase price when you sell your home. We have lots of stagers in this area who are killing it, and I have stagers at the ready in terms of you do want to list your home. And we use, if you don't, if you need to, we can use Knock in order to get you into a new home to get you situated so that if you have repairs or paint or things you need to do 
to the home you're currently in before you sell and we can stage it and make sure that you are in a position where you're getting the biggest bang for your buck on selling that home as well. And we can talk specific to those markets. So another thing that I do as an agent is create CMAs. A CMA is a comparable market analysis of the house in question. So whether you're a buyer and you're looking to purchase a home, I will do a CMA on that to make sure that the list price is within range, especially in terms of if you need to finance the home. So we know that an appraisal is really important. If the house appraises for way less than you're offering on it, we're going to have to renegotiate again after the appraisal comes in to either adjust the purchase price somewhat or all of it, uh, have, have you bring in additional cash to close or negotiate something else in terms of maybe it, maybe we have to walk away because the sellers say, nope, you offered this and that's, we're not taking anything less than that. So lots of very variables in terms of um, buying and selling houses. And on the flip side, on the selling side, you know, it makes a difference. I will go in and look at all of the homes in your area that have sold recently. And sometimes it's a long process. Sometimes because, especially in Oregon City, we have this varied market where it's not a development that has a lot of turnover with very similar houses, with similar lot sizes, similar square footage, similar number of bedrooms and bathrooms, age of home. Uh, layout and things of that nature. If we're looking at a house that is in the middle of nowhere with a certain number of acres and there's nothing close by that has sold recently, comping that house out is going to be a little bit more time consuming. And um, I will dig my heels in and take all the time that it needs in order to be able to come up with what we think the market value is. If you've seen any of my other videos, you will know not to believe his estimate. If you are a homeowner and you are looking on Zillow or Redfin or Trulia or Realtor.com to determine what your house is worth, I challenge you to look at all of them and see the varied difference between what each of those consumer-facing websites say your home is worth. You're only going to get an accurate representation if you have an agent such as myself walk through your house and take into consideration all of the things. That includes curb appeal. That includes who's next door to you, across the street from you, and behind you. That includes what systems you have in your house. That includes whether your roof is leaking. That includes what your curb appeal looks like, your floor plan, your finishes, everything. We take all of that into consideration before coming back to you with a price. So, if you have an agent who walks through the door and says, oh, I can get you blah, 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 blah for your house, I would take that with a grain of salt. I would ask for another uh, opinion after somebody walks through and then performs the comparable market analysis. Because in a lot of instances, they're working with outdated data. We have to really look at, and our market fluctuates about every six months. So we are kind of six months behind because it's typically how far back we look, depending on the market, for those comparable prices. Interest rates are also contributing to those dollar amounts. So taking into consideration a home that could have sold for six fifty dollars during COVID times when interest rates were really low is not going to sell for six fifty dollars on today's market because interest rates are so high and they have really made a difference for the buying power of those buyers out, out on the market. So we've seen those prices slightly decline as well. And that's going to take a educated and experienced agent such as myself to go look at those comps to determine what the house in question is worth in today's market. That being said, I also coach my clients that they should know a home is only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. And that is true market value. So you might see one house that you think is comparable to yours and it goes for $750 and you can't even get $650 for your house. You have to know that there was probably something really special about that 
transaction deal home in general that made that house worth that dollar amount. Maybe it's in your neighborhood, but it's a couple blocks away and everyone on that street takes immaculate care of their home. Or the house was maintained so incredibly well that there were no issues. You walk in the door and you think, oh my goodness, the smell test, it smells awesome. There's no mold. The roof is brand new. The systems are brand new. The floors are fantastic. Every finish in there was tailored to that buyer. And then your home, a couple blocks away, you might have a couple neighbors who aren't taking good care of your house, maybe, or good care of their house. Maybe when the buyers come by, there was loud music. Um, you know, anything can really contribute to why a buyer says, well, I don't really think that this house is worth as much as the one a couple blocks away. It could be square footage is not exactly the same. Your floor plan is not exactly the same. Maybe you don't have a brand new 50 year roof. There are lots of things to take into consideration as well as finishes. You can see behind me, I have a great bay window that lets in a lot of really bright light, especially when the sun is out here in Oregon. And you might walk into a house that has the doldrums. You get a feeling that it's dark and dingy and not super energetic. The vibe isn't really there. And that can be a contributing factor because somebody's going to think, well, now on top of me spending all this money to buy this house, I'm going to have to paint every single inch of it. Maybe you have popcorn ceilings and the people hate popcorn ceilings, but they love everything else about the house. And then they think, well, I'm going to have to spend this money on finishing, fixing these popcorn ceilings. There are lots of different reasons as to why your house is maybe not worth or is maybe worth more than the house down the street, the house next door, the house a couple blocks over. So it takes an expert such as myself to be able to look at that data. And most of the time we've also seen inside those houses whereas you potentially have not. Although I do have some clients who are really tight with all of their neighbors who have been waiting for the perfect house to come on the market, have not quite seen it yet, and they know every single person who has sold recently and will be able to tell me what their house is going to sell for way better than I could. And that's when I come in handy because I trust you in some instances to be able to make those decisions. If I know you well enough to know that you are an expert in your own market. Oh, I have a phone call coming in, but I won't answer it because I'm here with you. Thank you for sticking around. If you like and subscribe, want to see more videos, go ahead and do that. Comment below if you have any questions. Some people will totally disagree with me. Some people will heckle some, some haters and some lovers out there too. I welcome it all. It just means that there's somebody out there who's paying attention. And so we'll talk again about what's happening right now. It is summertime. It's supposed to be the height of the market. We have not seen quite the height of the market as we normally would in this portion of the year. I think a lot of people got really spoiled during COVID. Um, it, it's, it, it's kind of across the board, across the nation with all my referral partners that I'm talking with in all the different states around um, where things just are not the same as they were a couple years ago during COVID times when those interest rates were severely low. We are still seeing a really good influx of first-time home buyers in the market. I love first-time home buyers. If you're one, please reach out. I will. I would love to help you get into your first home. Education and empowerment is kind of my shtick, and I really like it. And I love the feeling that I get when I hand over the keys for the very first time. Not to say that I don't also work with investors and other people who are buying and selling houses all everywhere in between. I'm happy to work with any of you. So I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out. My information is down below. Comment and maybe I'll see you around.